video will cover section 14.4, matrices, basic operations. Um, we're going to start by establishing that in order to add or subtract matrices, they have to have the same dimension. And so let's look at this technique here, and it says the sum of two matrices of the same size. So this is going to be very important because if the two matrices are not the same, of the same size, same make, uh, number of rows and columns, then we cannot add them or subtract them. So uh, going back, the sum of two matrices of the same size is the matrix which elements that are the sum of the corresponding elements. So the elements that have that are located in the same column in the same row are going to be added or subtracted. Um, and then here, addition is not defined for matrices but supervised. So let's get to the problems. And we have the first one here, and we have just variables, but that is fine. We can also add them with these variables. And we would just write them down like that, and that would represent that we're adding them. So A and W have the same um, address. They're both located in the same row, same column, or row, or column. Then we will add B with X because they're in the same location. And then C with Y. And then D with Z. And that's it. That's what is matrix location. So um, let's go to the next example, example B. And so for that one, we will have, first we check we have two rows and three columns, and so we have two by three. This one also has three rows. I'm sorry, not three rows, but two rows and three columns. So since they have the same dimensions, we can add them. So we will have two plus three, negative three plus one, zero plus two, one, plus negative 3, so we just say 1 minus 3, and then 2 plus 2, um, and finally we have negative 5 plus 5. So if we can, of course, look around at the numbers. We couldn't on this one because they were variables, and they were different variables. So here we have 2 plus 3 is 5, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, 0 plus 2 is 2, um, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, and we have negative 5 plus 5 is 4. Now, if we look here at example C, we will see that this one has two rows and three columns. And the other one, the matrix on the right, it has three rows and two columns. So because of that, the addition of these two matrices is undefined. We simply cannot add them because they don't have the same number of rows and columns. Now, let's start here with the additive inverse of a matrix. And so, to refresh our mind, um, if we have a number, let's say 10, and the additive inverse of 10, it happens to be negative 10. Because if we add those two numbers, we will get zero. Um, and zero in the set of real numbers is considered the additive identity of all real numbers. So we have something similar with matrices. So if you have a matrix and then you add the same matrix with, with the opposite signs, then you will get the zero matrix. And so we have here an example. This is matrix N. And then here we have the opposite of the matrix n. So you see all of them, that negative sign was, distri was distributed to every element inside the matrix. And so with that, we move on to subtraction. Because if you have to subtract two matrices, that will be defined as follows. A minus B is the same as A plus the opposite of matrix B. So it's like we're adding all the opposite elements of the same matrix. So let's see the example. So we're going to have here three. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to just rewrite it, the first one. And then I'm going to, instead of having that negative sign, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative sign to every single element inside the matrix. Remember, that's like we had a negative one in front of it. So that will be 
plus a two with a negative times a negative, and then we'll have negative two, negative three, and negative four. Then we can add the elements. Um, three plus two is five. Negative two minus two is negative four. Five minus three is two, and zero minus four is negative four. So we could do that, um, turn it into an addition, or you could just simply say, okay, I'm going to have three. One here. And then I need to subtract negative two. So that's going to be three plus two, which is five. And that's what we got. Then we can either say five, and then we will subtract. Three. And so that gives us two. And that's the same thing we got here. So if you want to approach it as a sum or as a difference, that is actually the same thing. Because a subtraction is the same as addition of the opposite sign. So we have here a matrix, we have two matrices, and I know they look a little bit weird, but they're still matrices. This is one row, three columns, one row, three columns. So we call them one by three. And so to subtract them, we will simply say 2 minus 3. I'm not going to write it as an addition of two matrices in this case. Um, then that was this number. Uh, then we will take negative 3 and subtract negative 2. And finally, we take 5, and then we subtract 1. So this one will end up looking like this. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And then here we have 3 plus 2, right? Because we have negative and it's a negative. And so, um, and it's not a 3, I'm sorry. It's a negative 3, same thing, negative 3 plus 2. So that will be negative 1 as well. And then we have 5 minus 1, and that is 4. And so that is the ready answer for the first slide. So let's go ahead and move on to the... Uh, Second slide. And so here we have this equality statement. And so it says that if you are saying that two matrices are equal to each other, then it must be true that every element that it has the same address, meaning first row, first column, or in this case for F, um, second row, third column, and Z, second row, third column. So you look at it here, we're saying that those elements that have the same location inside the matrix, they must be equal. And so that's what this E, if and only if statement means. Um, some books refer to it as that. Um, and so this is a double statement that means that if all these elements are equal, then all this these two matrices must be equal. And if the matrices are equal, then the elements are equal. So that double arrow was actually the symbol that we use for if and only if, a double arrow. Um, so let's see what we have here. So what I'm going to do is do the operation that is on the left side of the equal sign. And so that will be A minus 2, B minus negative 1, so I'm just putting together the ones that are of the same, um, that have the same address. And then C minus negative 5, and D minus 6. Why am I saying minus? Because they have the difference here. Here, I'm just going to copy what I have. I'm not doing anything to this side yet. And then um, I'm just going to simplify a little bit the left side. So we have A minus 2. Here we're going to have B plus 1 because of the sun. Um, then we have C plus 5, and then B minus 6. So now we have this matrix on the right side that has numbers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the statement that we have here. And so we're going to say that the elements with the same location within the matrix, such as A minus 2, should be equal to 4. And so with that, we're going to find out what are the values for A, B, C, and D. So we create, we're going to create four linear equations. A minus 2 is equal to 4. 
and then we'll take this one here, b plus 1 is equal to 3, over right here, and then we have b plus 5 is equal to negative 2, and finally we have b minus 6 is equal to 4. Now we're going to solve for the variables. So a will be equal to 4 plus 2, right? This 2 is subtracting to the a, so if I move it across, it will do the inverse operation, which is addition. So a is equal to 6. That's our first answer. And here we have c is equal to negative 2. We take this positive 5 across, it will become negative 5. So c is equal to negative 7. And here we'll have b is equal to 3 plus 1. Move it across. Instead of the adding, it will be subtracting. So b is equal to 2. And here we have d is equal to 4. The negative 6 is subtracting to d. So if we take it across the equal sign, it will be adding to number 4. So d is equal to 10. And so with that, we have our four answers. Um, that was a question, remember, find A, B, C, and D. And so we got in here A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Okay, so now we have this thing, this other operation with matrices, which is called scalar multiplication. Um, and a scalar is just a number. So it is basically when you multiply a matrix times a number. And what you do is you're going to distribute that number to every single element in the matrix, just like if there were the randomness. So in this case, my first row is going to be negative 2 times 3, that's negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 1, that's positive 2. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. Then we move to the second row. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And then finally, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And so that is the answer for that question. Now let's move on to the one on the right side. And so this is also a matrix, and it just has one column, but it has three rows and one column. So it's still a matrix. This, we can still do that scalar multiplication. So we distribute the 10. 10 times 1 through 3 will be 13. 10 times 0 0.2 will be 2. And 10 times 3.5 will be 35. So that's it for scalar multiplication. Now we're going to move on to example 5, and the problem states Miss Smith and Mr. Jones are salespeople in a new car agency that sells only two models. August was the last month for this year's models. The next year's models were introduced in September. Okay, and August was the last month for the old. Um, gross dollar sales for each month are given in the following page. So let's see what we have here. So we have this first matrix that represents the August steps. And we can see here that by row, the first row represents what Miss Smith sold in August. So she sold 54,000 um, worth of compact cars and 88,000 worth of luxury cars. Now we have here. The second row is Mr. Jones, and Mr. Jones, uh, in the month of August, sold 126,000 um, worth of compact cars, but zero in um, luxury. Now, let's see how they did in September. So, Ms. Smith, this was a September sales, so that's why we have two matrices. One is called A for August, and the other one is just B. And that will represent September. So the first row, Ms. Smith sold that much in compact cars, that much 
in the luxury cars. And remember, in September is when the new models were introduced. So for Mr. Jones, who had that he sold 304,000 in Hong Kong cars and 322,000 in luxury cars. So what we're going to do here, um, well, let me read this first. So for example, Ms. Smith had that, oh, I already said that to you. And contact sales card in August, and Mr. Jones had 3,000 and 42,000 um, in September. So what we're going to do here is the operations that are indicated. So first, we're going to add A plus B. Um, so that will give us 54,000 plus 228,000. Why? Because they have the same address. First row, first column. Then we're going to add the 88,000 to the 368,000. So that's going to tell us what um, they both sold in August and September combined. And just keep in mind the first row is going to represent um, Smith and the second row will represent the cells of the two groups. So here we have 126,000 plus 104,000. And finally we will add zero plus 322,000. So I have my results here and um, so you could see what is the combined cells uh, for the two months. And just remember, this is Ms. Smith, and the second row represents Mr. Jones. So let's go to part B of this problem, and it states to find the difference between B and A. So because of that, we have to write what is in the matrix B first. So we write the 328,000 first. And then we subtract what is in matrix A. We subtract that. The next one will be 368,000. And we subtract 88,000. Because those two are located in the same place. Then we will have 304,000. And we're going to subtract 126,000. And finally, we have 322,000. And we're going to subtract 0. And so what this is going to tell us is actually the difference between the month of September and the month of August. So I guess we could see if they their cells went up or if their cells went down, depending on if the difference is positive or negative. And so we have, for the answer, we have this, 144,000, 280,000, 178,000, and 322,000. And so as you can see, all differences were positive. So that means that for both car cells uh, and um, the cells went up, um, which is, it makes sense because they had new models in the month of September coming up. So let's look at matrix B multiplied by 0 0.05. And so that is where you distribute that 0 0.05 to every element in matrix um, B. 0.05 times 220,000, 0.05, and please note that is not 0.5, it's 0.05 times 368,000, we will have 0.05 times 304,000, and 0.05 times 322,000. And so with that, our result will be 11,400, 18,400, 
15,200 and 15,100. And so the problem, part C, actually, it represents Oh, okay, I see. So it represents the commission that each person receives. So for example, we had that for this matrix B, depending on the cells, the salesperson gets 5% out of that in commission. And so that's what we did. We multiplied 0 0.05 because 5% 5 in decimal is 0 0.05. And so that tells us that Miss Smith will receive that in commission and Mr. Jones will receive that in commission. This came from the compact car cells and this came from the luxury cars. So let's go to the next slide. Now here we have something a little more, um, not really complicated, but it's sometimes a little hard to see. And so we're moving on from scalar multiplication. That's when we just distribute one number to the whole matrix. Now what we're going to do is learn how to multiply a matrix times a matrix. But before we get into that, we're just going to multiply a row times a column. Okay. And so the condition here, so for example, to look at the dimensions, we don't know exactly how many elements, but we see that the subsquares it ends at n. And so that's why we say that this has one row and columns. That's what we have here. The second matrix, it has one column, and we don't know how many rows it has, but we see the subsquares here is n. And so that will be n rows times one column. And so the very first condition to multiply two matrices is that the numbers in the middle match, that they are the same. Um, so in this case, the number of columns of matrix A with the number of rows of matrix B. And the reason we have to have that one-to-one -one correspondence is so that we can multiply the first element from here. How many do we have? We have a total of n. So that element times this one. And how many elements do we have here? We also have n. And that's why you have to do that. So it will go a1 times b1, a2 times b2, a3 times b3, a4 times b4. And at the end, the very last one will be a sub n times a sub b. Um, so when you see it with numbers, it's a little easier. So we have here a matrix that has one row, three columns, and the one on the right side has three rows, one column. So we check these two numbers match. We have a three and a three, so that means that we can multiply them. And so the product is actually going to be of this dimension, one by one. So you take the numbers from the outside, and that tells you how big your matrix will be after you multiply them. Okay, so we're going to multiply 2 times a negative 5. And then we're going to add negative 3 times 2. And then we add 0 times negative 2. So we get negative 10 from here plus negative 6 and 0 times negative 2 is just 0. So this matrix is actually just negative 10 minus 6, which will be negative 16. And that is the answer for that. We're going to be multiplying matrices that are a little um, well, not a little, but they're bigger. So more than one column and more than one row. But we'll get to that in a minute. So let's look at example seven. We have a factory produces a flower water key 
that requires three hours in the assembled apartment. And one labor hour in the finishing department. Assembled personnel receive $9 per hour and finishing personnel Finishing personnel receive six dollars per hour. Total labor cost for C is given by the product. Three times three times three and one. And here we will have nine and six. And so find the answer to this one, well, let's see why it has that. And so we have here this matrix is representing the time that the product stays in, um, in labor. Um, well, this is for labor and this is for finishing. Now here, the $9 represents how much they get paid um, the people who works in the assembly department, the ones who take care of this part. Then here, the $6 is the amount that people who work in the finishing department make. And that is what corresponds to this, to one hour of labor. So if we multiply, we will multiply, of course, three times nine, Then we're going to add one times six. So that will be twenty seven plus six, which will be equal to thirty six. So the question how much would it cost for this problem? Um, sorry, for this um, per C to be um, built, and so it will be. $33 per C. And that is the answer to the problem. Now we get to this, uh, we're going to try with the Bernanke case now. And so let's see how it is defined. But what I was telling you earlier, that in order to multiply two matrices, they have to have um, these two numbers in the middle must be the same, must be equal. So we have, if, if A is a matrix of this type of dimension, and matrix B has this dimension, then the matrix product of A and B, which is denoted by AB, that's what it means, two matrices multiplying, it's an n by n uh, right here, and those numbers are actually coming from here, from the outside. n by n matrix, whose element in the i column, that's just to represent place, first, second, and third, uh, I'm sorry, i row and j column, is the real number of came from the product of the i row of a and the j column of b. So that sounds very confusing, but when we do it, you'll see it's not that bad. If the product of the columns in A does not equal the number of the columns in A, does not equal the number of rows in B, then the product is not defined. And so to give you a um, counter example, let's say you have a two by two matrix here and you want to multiply it by a matrix that has um, three rows and two columns. And so let's say one, two, one, one, seven, um, zero, five, seven, two, three, four. And so right here, because this number and this number are not equal, 
then we will say that the matrix product is undefined. Okay, so let's look at the matrices that we're given. And we have a matrix A with two rows, three columns. We have matrix B with three rows, two columns. And uh, so we check that the two numbers match, the three and the three, and they do, they match. So that's good, we can multiply them. But now the question will be, how big is the matrix going to be? And so that will come from here and here. It's going to be a two by two. And so what I like to do is divide my matrix into a two by two. Um, and then I will take the first row from here and multiply it by the first column of the matrix B. And I'm going to be adding those numbers. Now, what I would like for you to do is write down the ad address or location of every cell inside your matrix. So this is what I mean. This is first column. I'm sorry, first row, first column. First row, second column. Second row, first column. Second row, second column. And so that will tell me what do I need to multiply. So for example here, first row, first column, that tells me take the first row and multiply it by the first column. And that's what's going to go in there. So we take 2 times 1 plus, so it's 2 times 1, and then plus 3 times 2, and then plus negative 1 times negative 1. And then we move on to the, to the right, so that will be first row, second column. So what does that mean? But I'm going to take first row, but now the second column. Why the second column? Because that's what I need for this entry. So it will be 2 times 3 plus 3 times 0 plus negative 1 times 2. Um, then we're done with the first row of matrix A. So now let's move on to the second row because we have here a two. So second row and first column from matrix B. So we take negative two times one. And we add one times two. And then two times negative one. And then finally, we're almost there, we're going to take now the second row of matrix A and the second column of matrix B. So that will be negative 2 times 3, 1 times 0. We add it, remember that. And then 2 times 2. So now we need to simplify this a little bit. So we'll got we'll get um two times one is two plus three times two is six uh, plus one. So let's see, two plus six plus one that would be nine. Then we have here six. This is zero and minus two, so that would be four. Second row, first column, we have here we have negative two plus two minus two, so that's going to be negative two. And here we'll have second row, second column, negative six plus zero plus four, and so that would be negative two. And that is the answer to the question. Let's go to the next slide. So now we're going to multiply those matrices, but if you notice the question is telling you 
find the indicated product, that means multiplication, but only if it exists. So remember, some of those might be undefined. So first we need to check for the dimension. Here we have matrix A is a three by two. Matrix B is a two by four. So can we multiply them? Yes, because those two numbers match. And how big is my matrix gonna be? It's gonna be a three by four. So that means that it's going to have three rows and four columns. Yeah, three rows and four columns. Now, um, we're going to multiply it yet. Let's look at BA. So this is if we reverse the order. This is very important. I want you to keep an eye on this. So matrix B is a two row, four column matrix. And matrix A is a three row, two column matrix. So let's see if it's possible for us to multiply it. And you can see very clearly that the two numbers in the middle do not match. But they did match when we had A first and B second. They don't when we have B first and A second. So what does that tell me? Well, it tells me two things. First, that B, A is undefined. It's simply impossible for us to multiply it. Why? Because that is the rule. Um, those two numbers in the middle have to match. And what that tells me as well is that the product of B, A does not equal the product of A, B meaning that matrix multiplication is non-commutative. So if you reverse the order of the matrix, matrices to be multiplied, you will not get the same. Um, for example, with real numbers, if we multiply 2 times 3, we get 6. And if we reverse them, 3 times 2, we also get 6. So multiplication in, for the set of real numbers is commutative. Almost all multiplications are commutative. Um, except the major piece. And maybe there's another one, but that's the one that I know. So, we have that. Now let's let's look at C times D. And so here we have a two by two. We have a two by two. That's easy. We have a two by two here. We have a two by two here. So yes, we can multiply. But let's see if we actually get the same. And in some cases you might get the same, and others you won't. So what I'm going to do here is take the first row, first column. So that will be two times one plus. 6 times 3. Then I'll take the first row, second column, so that will be 2 times 2 and 6 times 6. Then move on to the next one, second row, first column, so that will be negative 1 times 1 plus negative 3 times 2. And then finally, to finish, we take the second row, second column. And so that will be negative 1 times 2 plus negative 3 times 6. And so what we get from here will be 20, 40, negative 10, and negative 10. Now let's multiply the other two. And so that's going to be also another 2 by 2 matrix, right? And we're using the same matrices, but in reverse. Uh, so now we take the first row. First column, so that will be 1 times 2 um, plus 2 times negative 1. And then we multiply first row, 
second column. So that would be 1 times 6 plus 2 times negative 3. And then we move on to second row. First column, and that would be 3 times 2 plus 6 times negative 1. And finally, we take the second row, second column. So that will be 3 times 6 plus 6 times negative 3. So the product of this one is actually going to be the zero matrix. So you can see clearly that matrix multiplication is non commutative because BD, even though they're both defined, they're not equal. CD is not equal to BD. Now, um, if you are very confused with this matrix multiplication, um, I have good news for you, you can still do it on the calculator. And so I don't really have a problem if you want to do that. So what we need to do first is uh, I'm going to get my calculator out. We need to enter our matrices. Um, so the way that I enter mine, you already know how to enter yours on the calculator. I have a different way. So I'm going to enter matrix A, which was a Three row, two column matrix. So, like I was saying, I need three rows and then I need two columns. And then I can enter my matrix here. So, I'm going to go by rows two, one. One, zero, negative one. You guys notice I'm using the small negative, the one below number three. And then number two. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to move to the side, and then use the multiplication symbol. And then I'm going to enter my matrix B. And matrix B was a two row. by four columns. So I'm going to enter all the numbers there. One, negative one, zero, and one. And we go two, one, two, oops, not five, four, and three. Oops, that's wrong. Let's move back. And then it's a good idea that after you enter your numbers, you just check it again, make sure you enter everything correctly. And so I press enter or equals, and that's what I get. Um, so I'm going to check with the textbook. Yes, we have first column 413, negative 1, negative 1, 3, 2, 3, 4, 2, 1, negative 1. So that is correct. And so, yes, good news, you can still do multiplication. Um, of matrices with your calculator. So let's move on to the next slide. We're almost done with this section, and the other two are very short. Um, so I'm hoping to do maybe two videos of 30 minutes for 30 minutes for each section. Okay. So we have here E times F and um, we're going to need to get a few of this so let's just do one more time so we have two times negative five. I'm going to do that in my head now so that's negative ten. And then I have to add the product of negative three times two so that's negative two. And then I have to add the product of 0 times negative 2. Oh, 
Oh, which is just zero. I didn't even write it. So zero times negative two is zero. And so what is that equal to? Means negative ten minus six and negative sixteen. And that's it. We could also multiply a matrix times a matrix, which is the same as squaring a matrix. So let's see if that's possible. So here we have three rows, two columns, and here we have three rows and two columns. So even though squaring the matrix is doable, for this particular matrix it's not because those two numbers are not the same. Um, so what do we say from this one? We say undefined. Now let's see if we can multiply F times E. So this is a three row, one column, and this is one row, three columns. So yes, we could do it. So negative five times two, that would be negative 10. And then we have two times negative three, that's negative six. And finally negative two times zero, and that is zero. And so if we combine these numbers, we will actually get negative 16. So you might be thinking when you said multiplication was not commutative. Well, in some cases, it could be, such as this one. Here we could say that EF is the same as FE. But the reason for that is that we were just multiplying one row times one column or one column times one row. So the order in this case didn't really matter. Now let's look at this matrix, uh, matrix C, and we're going to square it. And so remember what we did before, matrix A squared was undefined because the numbers didn't match. So if we look at matrix C, we have a two by two, and we have here a two by two as well. So there's not even a need to check, but yes, the product is doable. And so if we were to multiply these two matrices, we would get, um, don't just assume that it would be two squared, six squared, negative one squared, and negative three squared. Um, that would be completely wrong. Um, you still have to go through the whole process that we've been looking at. So we will take the first row, first column. So it's two times two plus six times negative one. Then we take first row, second column, so that would be two times six plus six times negative three. Then we take second row, second row, first column, so that is negative one times two uh, plus negative three times negative one. And then finally, second row, second column. So that would be negative one times six plus negative three times negative three. And so here we're gonna get four minus six, so that is negative two. Here we'll get 12 minus 18, so that will be negative six. Here we'll have negative two plus three, so that's one. Here we'll get negative six plus nine, and so that will be positive three. And so that will be the answer to C, matrix C squared, which means matrix C multiplied by itself. Okay, now the next example, um, we have to use matrix multiplication, but then we also have to find the variables that are missing. And so the way we're going to find those variables is by using systems of equations. And so we have here our matrix. So we have this matrix multiplied to this matrix, and the product is equal to this one. And so remember what we learned before, that if we have an equal sign here, we're saying that the left side is equal to the right side. And so what I'm going to do is just set up the multiplication. So just to make sure this is a 2 by 2, this is also a 2 by 2. I can multiply because these two numbers are the same. 
And the resultant matrix is going to be also a Q by Q, because those are the numbers in the epsilon. So let's see. We take first row, first column, and that will be 2 times A plus negative 1 times B. Then we take first row, second column, so that will be 2B plus negative 1 times D. So we're done with the first row. And now we're going to take the second row, first column. So 5 times A is 5A, and then 3 times C is 3C. Remember, we're adding this quantity. Um, to finish, we take the second row, second column, second row, second column. So that will be 5B plus 3B. I'm going to simplify this a little bit because we have those negative ones. So this will be 2A minus C, 2B minus D, and then we have 5A plus 3C, and we have 5B plus 3B. Now, those expressions that you guys see, they're actually here. So we have 2A minus C, and we have 5A plus 3C right there. Uh, the other ones, 2B minus D is here, and then 5B plus 3B is here. So that's how I'm going to solve for those variables. Now, what do those vari what, what does that have to equal to? Well, that must equal, this one here, since it's in the first row, first column, must equal to negative 6, because negative 6 is also in the first row, first column of the right side of this e equation. Then we have 2b minus d, that's second, first row, second column, so that must be equal to 17. We have here 5a plus 3c, second row, first column, so that must be equal to 7. And finally we have 5b plus 3d in second row, second column, so that must be equal to 4. Why? Because 4 is also in the second row, second column. So now we have a system we're going to solve for, for the variables, for A, B, C, and D, two at a time. Um, what I'd like to do here is just use um, addition or elimination. And so I, I choose to do that because I already have negative C and positive 3C. And so what I wish I had was a negative 3C, right, so that we could cross that out with this one. I don't have it, but I can make it happen if I multiply the original equation by a constant. And that constant is just going to be 3. How do I know it's 3? Well, because I have positive 3 here, and I wish to have negative 3. I already have the negative sign, so there's no need for me to multiply by negative 3. The second equation stays the same, 5a plus 3c equals 7. Now, right here, after multiplying, it's very important that you distribute that 3 to every single element in the equation. So we'll have 6a minus 3c is equal to negative 18. The second equation, we did not change anything. We just write it. And right here, we can eliminate variable c. Um, while we do that, we get here 11a. And by combining them, and so we get negative 11. So to solve for A, it's very simple. It will be negative 11 divided by 11, because this 11 here is multiplying to the A, and so that tells us that A is equal to negative 1. Now, once you know one of the variables, you could use back substitution, of course, and we could find the other variable. And so, Actually, I need those numbers. This was a negative 6, and this is 7. So what I can do is take this equation now, 2a minus c equals negative 6. And I can substitute the number I got for a, which is negative 11, and then I will solve for c. So 2 times negative 11 is negative 22. What I'm going to do is take this negative 6 to the left, 
so it will become positive 6. And then I'm going to take the C, the variable, which is subtracting on the left, I'm going to take it to the right side, and that will make it positive. So negative 22 plus 6 will be negative 16, and that is the value of C. So, so far we got that A is equal to negative 1, and C is equal to negative 16. Now let's go ahead and solve for B and D. And here you can see again, we have opposite sign when we look at D. So we have a positive 3D and a negative D. So what I'm going to do is multiply that first one, first equation, times proof. So if I distribute the, num the 3, I'm going to get 6D minus 3D is equal to 51. On the bottom, second equation, I didn't change anything to it. So I can cancel that out. If I add the first equation to the second, here I will have 11D, and on the right side I will have 55. To solve for B, we got 55 divided by 11. So B is equal to 5. So we have one more to add here. And B is equal to 5. We just need to find D, and so to find D, you could use this first equation, 2B minus D is equal to 17. And all we got to do is substitute the value for B. Um, now, if you're wondering, can I use the other equation? Yes, you can. So in fact, let's use the second one. So if I take the second equation, um, this is the fourth. So if I take this one, and I have 5 b plus 3d is equal to 4. Now I'm going to use the number found, b equals 5. So I'll substitute that here. 5 times 5 is 25. So we have 25 plus 3d equals 4. So we're trying to solve for d, so what we need to do is take care of this positive 5 by subtracting 5 or moving it across the equal sign. So 3D is equal to negative 21. And so just to finish, D is equal to negative 21. And here the 3 is multiplying to D, so we need to divide the 3. And so we get D is equal to negative 7. And so that was the last of our four variables that we were looking for. Negative 7. So we went from multiplying the matrices Finding those expressions that you guys see here. And then we came up with systems by using the expressions that we found after multiplying. And these little numbers came from this matrix on the right side. So let's go to the next slide. And the last one for this section. So we have labor cost. We can combine the time requirements for slalom and trick water skis discussed in example seven and match problem seven into one matrix. And so um, if you don't remember, go ahead and look at your problem seven. That's the one that we got that it cost $33 to, to build a, a ski. Um, so we have here two matrices. One is the hourly wages, and the other one is the labor hours per ski. Um, remember from the other example, we have something about the assembly department, um, and then we have something about the finishing department. And so here, uh, our, this matrix on the left is kind of new because now we're including two states. Uh, we have California. So now we have here CA, and then we have Maryland, so MD. Um, and those are the hourly wages, but we're still matching, in this case, a row represents, the first row represents the assembly department, and for the other matrix, the first column represents the assembly department. 
Then if you look at the second row, we have the finishing department. And here, the second column is the finishing department. So the question here is, um, if I multiply the two matrices, I should be able to get the cost of building a C in the California plant. And then what would be the difference if that C was built in the Maryland plant? Well, we have to be careful because we already established the multiplication of matrices is non-commutative. So we know by definition and the L H does not equal H L, right? With matrix H being this one, the hourly cost or wages, and L being the labor hours. Um, so those two matrices are not the same. So what is the true answer when I ask you what's the price of building a C in California, including assembly and finishing? Um, so should we multiply HL or LH? And so let's let's analyze our results. So if we go this route, HL, we will be multiplying first row, first column. And with that, that will give us this, 99. So let's interpret that 99. So we're taking this 12 from the state of California, $12 for the assembly department, multiplying it by this five, and that five is actually coming from the assembly department as well. So this is from California, keep that in mind. And then we multiply, we add actually the product of 13 plus three right here. Now let's see what, what does that 13 mean? That 13 is the hourly wage for Maryland. We're multiplying it by this three, which is the time it takes to build it in so long ski. But the fact that this is in Maryland and this is in California, it makes no sense because it costs two different amounts of money to build a ski in, in either plant. And so the fact that you have to add them is not going to give you a good answer. And so how can we fix this problem? Well, we're going to fix it by reversing the order in which we multiply the matrices. Now let's see if this one makes sense. So here, if we multiply first row times first column, we will be looking at this five, which is the hours it takes to build it. We have that here times this 12, which is the hourly wage for the assembly department, and it takes five hours in the assembly department, so so far we're good, and that is in California, just so we know, because that 12 came from California. Okay, now let's look at 1.5 times 7, and so that is here. Where is that 1.5 coming from? Well, that 1.5 is coming from here. How long it takes for the same particular ski uh, to, to be in the finishing department? And so that is one and a half hours. And what are we multiplying the 1.5 by? We're multiplying it by seven. And seven is actually the hourly wage for the finishing department. So here we're saying that we're matching the assembly department with the assembly department. We're matching, matching the finishing department with the finishing department. And so did we go from state to state? No, we didn't. We were matching the hourly wages of the assembly department with the finishing 
wages, actually the hourly wages of the finishing department with the hours in the finishing department. So yeah, this one makes sense. So what you need to do is actually multiply this one. And that resultant matrix, it actually explains this. So it will cost this much for this particular type of steep to be built, including labor and finishing details, in California. For the same ski in Maryland, it will cost this much. Now, for the other type of ski, it will cost $33 in California and $47 in Maryland. And that's just the labor cost, but including assembly and finishing. So this is the end of the video.